Um, let me sort of give you an idea. Five years ago, I left journalism. I was a financial columnist for the Daily Business Review. I was writing about banking. Prior to that, I spent about nine years working um, as a journalist in South Florida, working for a variety of different publications. Started off in Miami today, went to South Florida Business Journal, worked at a variety of different things. What I am today is effectively. Slow down. What I am today is effectively a journalist who's sort of playing in the real estate market. In, in the, the, the area that we sort of uh, tried to carve out is residential shadow inventory. Nobody really knows what's going on, uh, how to get your hands on it. So we, we use a lot of journalistic principles to try to go ahead and, and figure out what's going on. And we're relying on public records first and foremost. I love that timestamp. It's always a great, great way to sort of defend myself against somebody who's complaining about what we have to say. Um, big, big picture, let, let's, let's start Google Earth and then zoom in, if you will. Big, big picture, there's been about 265,000 foreclosure filings, roughly Tri-County area. And everything I'm going to talk about is going to be Tri-County. It's going to be Dave, Broward, Palm Beach County, of which the 265,000, only 121,000 properties have come back to the to the uh, lenders uh, based on CTIs that are filed within, in various counties. And of the 121,000 properties that have come back, believe it or not, only 47,000 have sold. So what that means is there's roughly about 74,000 bank-owned properties that are now being held back. And because they're being held back, what the banks are trying to do is they're trying to drive up pricing. If you look at what's available today on the multiple listing service, most of these lenders have to uh, list their property with a realtor to make sure there's a third party involved. What you'll find is on the MLS today, multiple listing service, tri-county wide, you have about 62,000 properties currently actively available. Um, right after Lehman Brothers failed uh, back in 08, there were about 108,000. So we've seen a dramatic decrease in overall inventory. Now when we get to where we are today, tri-county wide, 62,000 properties, you're going to find that only 5% are bank owned. So the banks are, are, are whether it's whether it's it, it's purposely or intentionally or because of other issues, they're holding back the REO. And what that what the reason they're holding back the REO from what I've been told by lenders is it's, it, it's roughly taking them about 18 months now, and it's costing about 100 thousand dollars out of pocket uh, in order to repossess one of these properties. If they go and they short sale a property, theoretically it's going to take four to six months if it's priced correctly. And what we're finding based on closed sales, roughly a bank will achieve about 63 thousand dollars more per property going a short sale route rather than a bank owned route. A bank owned route uh, in 2010 traded about $111,000 per door. If you look at what a short sale went, it went roughly, I think it was $174,000 door. So there's a real financial aspect to this, and that's why the lenders are, uh, from all the lenders we talked to, we talked to regionals and we talked to foreign based institutions. I don't really deal with the nationals, um, but, but we're dealing with some of the ones who are sort of on the ground. So that's, the, that, that's really, I think, why we're seeing what we're sort of seeing in terms of the slowdown. The robo signing is creating a real issue among investors. Uh, we deal with a lot of all cash types of buyers who are coming in. And they're basically worried about title. They're worried about title. They're worried about uh, is something going to come back and, and sort of bite me, especially if I'm an out of towner, maybe I'm a foreign national, maybe I'm, uh, uh, I'm out of the Northeast, I'm somewhere else. They don't want to have to deal with that with that problem. So some of them are paying for the predictability. And the other aspect is on a short sale, typically you have somebody who's living in there preserving the property, unlike a bank owned, where the, the copper might be pulled out and, and the place might sort of be destroyed. So you know, there's, there's all these different factors uh, playing in. What I will tell you is this foreclosure uh, frenzy that's sort of occurring, and I like to compare it to like a battle being fought. You know, the flames have sort of died out now, and you got some smoke simmering, and they're bringing in the UN because the infrastructure is all set up now to sort of control it and manage it, sort of the, the way it's going. What you're finding is you're seeing a lot of these people who were in their developer acre, five bedroom places out in the suburbs, and they were over leveraged, and they decided to strategically default, and they decided to take their 18 months to get more closed. What they're doing now is they're turning into renters. If you look in downtown Miami today, what you'll find is in 2009, the average rental price per square foot to rent one of these brand new condos that went out was about $1.52 a square foot per month. 2010, it jumped up to 173. So far, 2011, it's up to 179, and the asking price today is 185. So you're seeing this migration of people who are at places that they don't necessarily need to be anymore. They're losing their property, they're cashing up, they're they're they're, they're saving, and now they're turning into renters. And their their outlook for the future is obviously going to be a renter. And what that's doing is that is driving all of this all cash investment money into this area, trying to pick off deals. I will tell you today, there are better deals in Atlanta than South Florida, but because of the publicity that South Florida has gotten, especially Miami. It is, it, it's really what's spurring um, these people to get on planes and, and come down here and try to buy whatever they can. They're, 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 uh, and I'll end with this. There was a um, there's a bankruptcy proceeding for a project called Everglades on the Bay um, that finally was resolved. This is a situation where I think Bank of America was in for about $205 million. The property ended up trading, or the note traded, I think, was $142, $142 million. 
there were four, five, six offers, all cash, 10% hard day one to go under contract that was competing for that product. So, you know, it's, it's anecdotal, but the money is there. They want to take down this stuff. And I think the lenders are realizing that if they short sell, they're probably going to be much better off than if they were to go to the REO okay. That was fast. <laughs>